right, good morning and welcome to Envision. My name is Laura Krause and I'm a senior here at Penn State. I love telling people that, that I'm a senior because it means I'm graduating and that's a huge accomplishment. But I'll actually be graduating with two degrees for the two things I study here. The first being biology, specifically vertebrae physiology. And that's basically the study of how and why animals like us function the way we do. So we answer things like, why do we have to drink water to survive? How does our body use that water? And why do we have to go to the bathroom after we drink a really big glass of water? That's all physiology. But the second thing I study is German, just because I like it. And with these two degrees, I will graduate and close out another chapter in my life. That's exciting because of what lies in the next chapter. I'll be applying to medical school within the next year and I'll get to try to pursue my dreams of becoming a doctor. But as I enter this transition period in my life, I've been doing a lot of reflecting just to appreciate how far I've come. I come from a family where education isn't really valued where if I spent too much time on homework, I got in trouble and was told to go play instead. I come from a town of a thousand people, most of whom worked on a farm. So I've been asking myself, how did I get here? How did I start there and end up here? An almost college graduate with two degrees on the way? and pursuing the highest form of education in an effort to become a doctor. How did that happen? Well, it actually started because somebody asked me a really deep question one day. It was thought-provoking, philosophical, and actually one you guys might have heard before. Just out of curiosity, I would like you to raise your hand if you've ever been asked the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Basically everyone. Thank you, you can put your hands down. This question is so simple and we're all asked it, but it changed my life. Now what my first answer to this question was that I wanted to be Batman when I grew up. Clearly that didn't work out too well. But then I was really set on being an author. I didn't know why, but it sounded like fun, having people read everything you write. But when I was in high school and it came to decide what I wanted to do about college, I realized I didn't have a real answer. And I needed a real answer, something solid. And because college is expensive, I wanted to be sure of it. So I really thought about this question, what do I wanna be when I grow up? And then I decided this question, it wasn't a great prompt for the rest of my life. So I took this question and I dissected it. I changed it and instead I started asking, what aspects of a job do I love so much that I wanna interact with them every day for the rest of my life? Now I was a lifeguard at the time and being a lifeguard taught me a lot, but it also gave me a ton of time to think about this question because there are many days when you have to sit on a lifeguard stand and stare at an empty pool for hours on end. So I had a lot of time to think about life. And I started to build myself a list, a list of things I loved so much that I wanted to interact with them every day in my job. Now, like I said, I was thinking about this when I was lifeguarding. So I started to ask, what do I love about lifeguarding? And I realized that it was because it was a service type job. I loved that it wasn't a desk job, I got to do something different every day, and I never knew what was gonna walk through my doors. I thought that was super cool. But then I started thinking about school and what classes I had at the time that I really enjoyed. That year, I was in a criminology and forensics class, and that was probably one of my all-time favorite classes I ever took, because that was the first time we took the science we learned in a textbook and we took it off the page and brought it into the real world. We could use these concepts to solve problems. And what I mean by that is, well, for example, 
the final for that class was actually a field trip. We went to the location of an unsolved murder in my town. My teacher staged the crime scene exactly as it was found in the 1970s. Blood splatter, fingerprints, footprints, they were all there. And for the final, we had to process this crime scene and try to solve the murder. I thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever done. But beyond classes, I was also involved in a ton of sports and extracurriculars at school. So I started to think about them and what I liked about them too. I ran track and cross country, and I also raced triathlons in the summer. I liked that being a lifeguard encouraged fitness, and I wanted my future career to do the same. Another club I was in is mock trial, which if you don't know where that, what that is, it's where you get a fake court case, you pretend to be a lawyer, and you argue that in a courtroom. I loved law and arguing if something did or did not meet a certain legal standard. Beyond traditional clubs, I was also involved in several programs, one of which was the tutoring program. I was a German tutor in high school, and I still teach here at Penn State. I love the challenge of getting people to understand complex topics. The second program I was involved in was the German exchange student program in my high school. So I got to go to Germany, I went to German high school, and it was one of the coolest experiences of my life. First, because I was actually there when they won the World Cup, so it was a fun time to be there. But also, it was the first time I ever really traveled, and it quickly taught me that I loved exploring new places. So now, I had myself a list of things I loved about school and about my extracurricular activities. But there was one thing I had to add to my list still. Affordability. Like I said, I came from a really small town and my family, although they said they would help me get a bachelor's degree, we really didn't have the money to go to graduate school to get a master's or a doctorate or any other further schooling. So whatever I choose, it has to be affordable. So now I have my complete list. And as a lifeguard still staring at that empty pool, I now started to think about well, what jobs include everything on my list. And it brought me down to two options detective or doctor. <laughs> when I thought about being a detective, I was able to see I could get everything I wanted on the list. But traveling wasn't a huge option, and that was okay. I decided to explore this career still. So I went to a program called Camp Cadet, where I lived with the state police for a week. And I was able to learn about being a detective. It was fun, it was interesting, and I was able to see that although it had all the characteristics I was looking for, it wasn't exactly what I wanted. I didn't really fit in there. But when I thought about being a doctor, I could also see I could get everything I wanted, minus that affordability factor. Medical school is very, very expensive. But my older brother, he is in the Marine Corps. And he told me about this program where the military will pay for your schooling if you agree to work for them. So now this affordability problem wasn't really a huge problem anymore. And so now I could explore this career. And in order to explore this career, I shadowed a gastrointestinal doctor. We did lots of colonoscopies in a week. Um, and if you don't know what that is, that's where you take a camera and you look in your large intestine. Um, so that also means there was a lot of poop that week. It was by no means a glamorous job, like what you see in TV or in the movies. But even as I watched this doctor pick up poop with his hands while wearing gloves, I still knew that there was no other place that I would rather be. So when it came time for me to go to college, my choice was easy. I chose to pursue to become a doctor. But when I got to college, I realized this list, it wasn't complete. I had something else to add to it. 
When I started college, I started working for the Travis Mannion Foundation, which is a charity that helps veterans and Gold Star families. Over the past several years, I've met countless veterans, and I absolutely adore working with them. So I had one more thing to add, working with veterans. But do you remember how I told you about that program that my brother told me about, where the military would pay for my schooling if I worked for them? Well, now it seems like I can get two birds with one stone. By working for the medical corps, not only is this an affordable choice, but now I also can work with veterans. It seemed to all really be coming together. And so now this, this is my list today. It's ultimately what directs me. I'm still changing it and adding to it as I learn and I'm growing and I have to make decisions about my future. But this list, it inspires my dream. It's my dream to be a doctor for the military. And interestingly enough, the main military hospital in use right now for the wars in the Middle East is actually located in Germany. So on top of it all, I'd likely get to travel back to the country I was once an exchange student in. That's my dream, but what's yours? I come back to that question I asked you earlier today. What do you wanna be when you grow up? As you try to answer this question, I encourage you to dissect it and write a list of things that you love. Luckily, you're here at Envision. So that means you probably already have one thing on it, science. But how will you add to your list? Thank you.